Hello, everyone. Welcome to the quarantine zone. Tim, you were just asking what QZ, QZ stands for. That's what it stands for, quarantine zone. Uh, Thanks very much. This is the 17th one. And this is a super cool one because group ones are always fun because it's not just me. Um, so how's it going, Riley? How's it going, Tim? How's it going, uh, Chris? Good, thanks. Yeah. Good. Um, we are here. It's a very special stream because, well, to be completely truthful, I'm not sure if we would actually have been on tour tonight. Can any of you remember if we would have been playing tonight? Oh, not yet, but it, this month, it's the, like... Let's you know, have a look. <laughs> the bulk of it was, was this month, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was this month. So, Tim Thornton, everyone, the very great Tim Thornton. Yeah, two released. weeks today would have been the first, the first gig. So we would have been not rehearsing now, basically. Yeah. Um, let, let's show everyone. So this is Tim's album cover. It's called Little One. And it's really nice. So everyone go and buy it from Tim's website, timthorntonbass.com. Um, we would appreciate it very much. We need your support in these times. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about it, Tim? We can kind of get the theme of the album from the album cover there, but tell us a little bit yeah. more about it. And Yeah. Um, so I had a child now almost two years ago. She's going to be two in January. So um, during that first kind of six month period, uh, where children are really hard to uh, get to sleep and get to do anything that you want them to do. I spent so much time walking her up and down the house trying to rock her to sleep and uh, just kind of humming melodies and bits of tunes mm. and stuff. So I had a bunch of tunes which I'd already written um, and then I kind of expanded them a bit and uh, also wrote some new tunes. So... Um, it was a lot of music that was inspired by that that period and uh, by my daughter. Uh, and then uh, because of the process of how I wrote a lot of it by just kind of humming and singing stuff, um, it's all uh, very kind of singable melodies because, mm. because I'm an awful singer. So that was uh, the only way that that was going to be possible. So um, I've always to skip back uh, a minute. I've always had piano in my band and... Um, uh, and piano is rubbish in. though. Everyone, no one likes piano, yeah. do they? Um, I quite like it. <laughs> so, so Anne came and did, um, came and did a lot. So all the music I had was previously kind of written with piano in mind, although there's not a lot written to it. Um, and then Anne came and joined us for a gig, um, where was that? Tunbridge Wells, wasn't it? Mm. Um, and it was just a really nice vibe. And me and Chris had been talking in the car on the way back saying, oh, I've got all this music which I want to record. Um, but, you know, in this day and age, do I want to sink thousands of pounds into a recording that I'm going to make 50p back on? <laughs> um, and Chris, so Chris said, well, tonight's band was great it was really fun and if we didn't have piano we could record it in my studio cut the costs right down and uh... oh i see so i'm there for sort of practicality <laughs> as opposed to uh artistic decisions good to know thanks well, yeah and i've been waiting for the right time to break that to you. so i thought <laughs> now in front of everyone <laughs> wicked well uh... Thanks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. It was it was a really fun gig. It was it was really kind of chilled. It's nice when things happen naturally because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes th things can be very difficult to make happen with scheduling, with you know finances and life and balancing yeah. spinning plates. You know, so it did evolve very sort of easily and naturally. And um, yeah, so we recorded it. Everyone, if you if you see uh, Chris Chris Draper there. We recorded it in that very room. Yeah. Um, tell us about your pad. I what mean, do you do in there, Chris? To be honest, it's pretty mad to think that we managed to get the four of us in here. Like now looking around, my drums have taken up the whole room. Well, I mean, you and me could fit in there, no problem. But like Riley's like, and Tim, um, Riley's head was pretty much bashing the ceiling, right? Yeah, yeah. so that was I'm the thing. You'll see in the videos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
the ceiling's on a slant on the way down and we had to put you in the in the tallest corner didn't we <laughs> sort of strategically placed <laughs> successfully placed i was quite it's... comfortable <laughs> so uh yeah i mean let's go to a video in a sec but but briefly how's it going riley where where are you hailing from you've been You've been doing a little bit of traveling, but you're now fully come back to London to lock down properly. I don't think I've been doing any fucking traveling. Oh, I went, um, I went home, sorry. Beep. I went home <laughs> to Ireland for a bit because my mum fell over and broke her arm. So I was at oh, home no. for a bit. Apart from that, I've just been here. I'm in Wembley. There's some art on the walls. It's not my art, but it's nice art. <laughs> and I'm quite well. Yeah, I'm good. All things good, man. Good. All right. Um, well, let's just say a quick, ooh, someone says can't, can't hear, Sandy. Oh, yeah, that, that's fine. I think we've managed to sort of that out. So just quick hello to Michael, Richard, Zeba, Sandy, Peter, Amy, Lorenzo, and uh, Jan. Jan, is it Jan or Jan? Like January or Jan Hammer? Uh, maybe you can clarify in the comments. And we do welcome Q&A if anyone's watching and has a question, um, you know, for anyone, for Riley, Tim, or Chris. Please do ask us questions. It's good to uh, keep it loose and involve you. And uh, from time to time, I will check my phone. So I'm not sending emails. I'm doing that. Um, Tim, do you want to tell us a little bit uh, about Chilean Pavilion? Or shall I yeah. whack it on? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I also didn't get around to mentioning that uh, because I've sung a lot of the melodies to, to write them, uh, I added on to the quartet um, vocals. So... My lovely wife, Rosanna Brandy, who's uh, sitting over there giggling about this. Uh, she came and layered on some vocals onto some of the tunes that we wrote, um, kind of counter melodies and stuff too. So uh, mm -hmm. you'll hear that in the first and last videos that I think we're going to play. Um, so this tune is called Chilean Pavilion. It's just a funny name and uh, <laughs> no, no story behind it, really. Great. Let's do it. Remember to mute your mics, chaps. Here we go, Chilean Pavilion.
Yeah, nice. Nice playing, guys. <laughs> you too, man. <laughs> um, did you notice at the very beginning, Tim, about three centimeters from your head, that calendar changed? <laughs> Sorry, no, it's a clock, not a calendar. Like it went from 1236 oh, yeah, yeah. to 1237. <laughs> did, you, did you leave that in just so people knew it was one take? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we had we had to keep going back and turning the clock back to twelve thirty six at the time to make sure. The problem is you can't go back, you have to go forwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. You have to go for twenty three hours and uh, fifty nine minutes. Um <laughs> so chaps, I haven't seen you at all this year. What the hell have you been up to? I haven't been up to very much. I don't think any of us surely have been. Oh, it's, apart from Tim, Tim has actually been doing things. Tim's been gigging. Yeah, I've, been, I've been making a lot of pizza. <laughs> pizza. Oh yeah, tell us about Zio Tim's. It's not cold anymore. Yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, I um, in the first lockdown, started selling uh, pizzas to neighbours to raise some money for the NHS, just for a bit of a giggle and something to do and to kind of bring the community together a bit and it's just kind of spiraled and I've ended up meeting local foodies who put me in touch with people so I've ended up doing kind of pop-up residencies at wine bars and uh, farmers markets at the weekends and stuff um, so yeah it's turned into a full, full-time job now um, so it's called Base Face Pizza, Base spelled B-A-S-E, that's the pun. Wicked. Solid name. <laughs> um, yeah and then uh my i've been doing every monday with my dad a little live stream zoom gig just to family friends and stuff and um so we get different drummer in every week and stuff so chris came in uh, a few times and then one one time he turned up and he was like oh yeah i see you've been doing the pizza thing i've, I've uh, set up a cookie company and i'm doing farmers markets and stuff as well so he'd like secretly been doing the same kind of thing as me without telling me about it. <laughs> not telling anyone about it, apparently. What's I, that all about? I don't know, man. I just kind of wanted to keep it to myself. I don't know. <laughs> oh, and, but then I realised, like, when I was doing it, that by going out places and seeing people, you just you end up bumping into people. So we ended up doing a lot around Richmond, which is where close. We used to live in Kew, just down the road. Um. So there's, I mean, I, there's not many people that I know in Richmond, but there's enough people that have come down to the market and turned the stall and gone, what? <laughs> what, is, what, what are you doing here? That's bad PR, Chris. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not great. But yeah. <laughs> What's yours called? Cookie face? Dough face? No, no, it's much more boring. I, it's, it is what it says on the tin. It's called the Surrey Cookie Company. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, Riley, to, to disappoint no, no, okay. you. I mean, I, I'm I'm happy to set you the task of coming up with a with a better name. I mean, I just gave you did it. <laughs> I already did it with low fat high hat cookies. <laughs> low fat high hat. <laughs> That's great. I like that. I mean, it's, it's an it's an out and out lie, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you um, can put two on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> with a um, with a. <laughs> An olive stick through the middle. Cocktail stick through the stick. middle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name. Low <laughs> so, yeah, fat, high hat. What's going on? What's going on? It took me a long time to find something that rhymes with something drummy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, have you just been uh, doing all your key work? Because you're an important key worker, aren't you? I, I am a key worker. I, I mean, I'm not a key worker in any sense. What do you but mean? technically, you are. What, what do you mean? Is that, is that I play the drums and I don't? Oh, I see what you mean. I thought you were making a. I don't play a pitched instrument. You know, drums are put. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, I don't know if. I'm really niche. I, I don't know if I would have found that. <laughs> I don't know why my brain went there. Of all the, all the places it could have gone. I don't know. Are teachers key know. workers? I mean, our music teachers probably aren't key workers if it's a conservative government. That, yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I, I, I don't really know. Something else there, Riley. <laughs> Technically, they are. Technically, they are. Um, hey, guys, do you know what we could do, yeah? So that a US election, d shall we do a bet? Does anyone, does anyone think Biden's not going to win? I couldn't bet against no, I think. I think he's got 
the better chance of winning. I think if you vote, if you like betted for Trump to win it and then he did win it, it would just be so depressing. I don't see how you'd have any joy about winning the bet, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although I can do know get, people who've done that. Yeah, Rick Simpson. Can we get him in on this? <laughs> we probably can do, yeah. <laughs> Why is he? Did he actually bet that Trump would win? I think so, yeah. Well, last, like he did, four years. He did last time as well. Hmm consolation but it would feel like dirty money wouldn't it i think yeah um uh, money's money indeed it is tim do you uh do you, is there much of a story i do you know what i've all i've always wondered about homage to omer i've always been like who is omer um, um what does he do omer oh the bass player yeah oh wicked yeah. what an original idea well done no sorry <laughs> Um, he's great, isn't he? Um, he's very good. Um, yeah, he uh, he had a live at Smalls album um, from quite a long time ago. I'm going to say more than 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, um, which had, um, it, was, it was quite a weird lineup. I think it was like bass, drums and three saxes. Um so I look it up. You could do, um, yeah. I've heard of someone using three saxes before, closer to home. Alam Nathu. He had a, a, a band yeah. for a short while called Cerberus, Cerberus something, that, that three-headed oh, bear that's, thing. That's yeah, yeah. For something with three saxophones, Cerberus. That's yeah, cool. yeah. It's heavy. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, so that, there was um, a track on that album, which... Um, which kind of inspired it, which was a kind of like droney, peddly, open mm. string kind of vibe. Um, yeah, all of my songs are stolen from something in some way. <laughs> that's, where, that's where that one was stolen from. But also, he's just such an amazing bass player. So he I'm was sure uh, he stole it too. <laughs> I'm quite sure he stole it from someone too. Everything's yeah, just I think passed it, around, I think isn't the, it? Yeah, I think the tune's called Kentucky Woman or something like that. So that. that that sounds like it's been stolen from. It's probably an old uh, bluegrass song or something like that. I I mean I always tell people if I've stolen something, but to actually declare the the exact source of what I stole, I appreciate your uh, openness with that, Tim. Oh yeah, well I'm a retired musician. I'm a pizza maker now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The stakes are low, as it yeah. were. Um, <laughs> great. Let's uh, let's. Um, Let's go to homage to Omer. And uh, after that... Oh, no, um, hold on. Oh, wait. Oh. But would you have to take time to download it? It's just uploaded. I've sent you the intro. Oh, we, we, with the in, intro as well, yeah? Well, I think maybe Chris and Riley... Maybe Chris and Riley can just say some really interesting, amusing things like they always do to people while mm -hmm. I just download it. Riley? Yeah, sure. Hey, Chris, have you read any good books recently? Or, hey seen any good movies or anything uh, tim that email hasn't come through oh. i literally just sent it as i said that so okay i'm refreshing i kind of prefer the live commentary of of the uh of the email sending to be honest well, they'll get both won't they what book i'm reading it's probably much more interesting what book are it you it's not been scanned for viruses and could be a virus Riley. Exactly. so i wonder I this saw is that a... movie um 1917 last night have you ever seen that uh no i'd like to see it. is it good it is good yeah go watch it cool. <laughs> <laughs> jesus that's the new level right there hey, i saw tenet anyone seen tenet no no it's good. oh i heard it's a bit rubbish is it shit oh i have to say i, I really enjoyed it actually is that the chris, um, is that the chris nolan thing yeah yeah hmm. it, it's definitely um <laughs> like a bit of a brain twister Mm -hmm. So if you if you wanted um, something that dead sort of simple, you're going to be disappointed. What's um, it? Tenet. Tenet, yeah, T E N E T, and it's a it's a palindrome for a reason. What's everyone's favourite palindrome? I'll tell you what, everyone, write in the comments your favourite palindrome, and no one's allowed to do a man, a plan, a canal, Panama. We want how, short how? ones like Abba, Hannah, how race about? car. Live evil. Nice. Drawn inward. 
Live Olive. Live Olive is not a bad drum, dude. Live Olive. Wait, wait, wait. What am I thinking of? Shut up, shut no, up. It's not right, but... <laughs> Evil, evil, what? evil olive, evil olive. Evil no, olive. No, evil live. It's live evil. Live. No, but this one. Live evil olive can't, also works. Can't take a evil it. olive. Got another word. Next evil time. olive. That's like a better album. album. That's not how they work. There's an album by I think it's some uh, some French cat, and it every name, every track name is is a palindrome. Is it palindrome? That is the correct term, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, no one's joining in with the game. No one's and, joining in with the game. And Laura right. Waltner. I gave you one. We've, we've, we've still got 400 megabytes to kill but before we can end this cursed what, uh, thread. Oh, hey, it's Valentina. going quite quick. And what have you been listening to? Anything good? I did listen. To, I have been listening to some cool stuff. Um, Emmy, Ma, Emmy Makabe. She's a shamisen player and singer uh, with Kenny Wallison. Um, that, was, that was cool, like something different. Um, oh, Amy. Um, I mean, kind of like the usual stuff. I would have to go on. Oh, lots of Keith Jarrett. Because we've been quite oh, yeah. a, kind of had Keith yeah. Jarrett on like almost all the time, to be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just because most of it's good. You know, a lot of it, it's like a lot more out than I remember it being. Don't know about what? you. Yeah, it can What's your favorite um, Keith Jarrett band then? I do like the European, um, the one with Dewey Redman and and Co. That's the but American. you are that's the American one. Oh, is it? oh yeah, Jan Garbrek and stops the European. To be honest, I really like the solo. Yeah. I like the solo energy, but the standard trio is cool. I don't know. What about you? I've never really thought about what my favorite is specifically because yeah, it's all great I, I, to me. I adore I adore Dewey Redman. He's my he's one of my favorites ever. So the American one. I, it's still not my favorite music, I don't think. It's, uh, mm. but it's sad. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? That was the first, first oh, yeah. jazz CD I ever bought. What was um, it? was a, oh man, I actually can't remember the name of the album now. It was, a, it was Jarrett, um, it was the trio, um, and it had a white and black, black and white cover, and it was called Out. <laughs> Out, I don't know, I can't remember. I'm gonna to have to Google it. This is gonna annoy me now. Um, it, Riley, it was, it was on the top of Kit Downs. Riley, yeah. will you please control your wife? She has said her favorite palindrome is Ant Law Smells. <laughs> I, I will not stand for this abuse in a public <laughs> forum. <laughs> um, good work, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kim, for your contribution. <laughs> And what's with She's what's with the been a noted wit? <laughs> <laughs> she has indeed. <laughs> what's with people who like add you on Facebook and they have like a secret name? So I've got there's a someone called Droid Droid, and I'm like, that's not fair. Like you get to be secret, but you want to be my friend, and I'm not being secret. It's like it's not an even transaction. All right, everyone, think about that while we play Ode and have a very clumsy segue into homage to Omer Avital. <laughs>
Right. Imagine this wasn't happening and it just segued <laughs> straight in. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and the clock showed the same time, also imagine that. That melody that I played in the outro, I think, is the direct quote of uh, the original song I stole it from. 
Amazing. The honesty here is astounding. Yeah. <laughs> I also love that Ant made a point of pointing out the like thing. <laughs> and then I like to dwell on things so a lot. It really is <laughs> completely different. <laughs> made the point of pointing out what? He made the point of pointing out that the clock means that you know it's the same thing. And then Oh right, yeah, yeah. And then immediately the next thing is not like that. <laughs> Yeah, because I didn't want to make you guys on the day we recorded it. I didn't, I wasn't making everyone sit around in the studio whilst I did four hundred takes of that of that intro. <laughs> so uh, Chris had to sit there and keep pressing. What did you do? I bet you didn't do four hundred takes. You two sat out. You two sat outside uh, drinking blue spirulina. Yeah, we did do that. Eating sausage rolls. Well, that so was a, That was a glorious haul, man. Was that? Was it a Waitrose we went to? Yeah, Chris drove us there. Was it Waitrose? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was fancy, fancy lunch. We got a serious haul. Yeah. We got blue what drink. Sorry, isn't it? <laughs> um, my wife loves the blue spirulina one now, by the way. That was, that was the, like, you know, there was life before that moment of blue spirulina discovery and life after it. And there's no looking back in our household. Really? No looking yeah. back at all. I'd agree with that, man. That was a that was a that was a, a life changing day. That moment. If I see it in the shop, I'll pick it up for sure. It's very good. Yeah, they they even sell it in powder. I even I, I nearly picked some up the other day, and then I thought that was nearly too far. I was going to take a picture and send it to you, but judging by your facial expressions, uh, maybe I should have just sent it to you. <laughs> you should have, man. Yeah. Anything spirulina? I still don't actually know what it is, and you know I don't really care either. Isn't um, it like? Seafood or something, isn't it? Like seaweed or something. Demon. This is quite funny. I hope there's no botanists seaweed. watching. Seaweed. You might know the gutter, you filthy boy. Um, I'm well, so struck by how incredibly awkward and tense I look when I'm playing. I feel like I need to work on that. I look like you you gave it a bit of like... Yeah, I know, right? In, yeah. in that one, when you started to do like the squealing. I was listening to Coltrane Graz last night. You oh, told me about no. that recording, man. Yeah, yeah. he's good, yeah. Um, the, the Autumn Leaves on that is... Yeah, yeah. Astoundingly. Is he on Soprano on Autumn yeah. Leaves? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In Spirit, case anyone's Blue interested. Oh, guys, so guys. Blue spirulina is a blue-green algae which grows in ponds, lakes, and then alkaline waterways. So, yeah, it's kind of Ooh, like a, fresh, a freshwater seaweed. Mm, I like it less River, now. Riverweed. That's what you're eating. They're kind of <laughs> they're scooping it out of the Thames and putting it straight into your smoothie. <laughs> oh, I was quite close with semen, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The There's thought. probably quite a lot of that in it, too. Yeah, yeah fish, so, yeah. Um, the van eating out of the tents. <laughs> Tim, so we know how you've been staying sane, man, for like nine months making pizza. But seriously, Riley, what the hell have you been up to, man? Uh, have you been, well, have you been video gaming or what? Yeah, I've been playing a lot of video games. An awful lot. Okay. Which ones? Which ones? Oh, um, I'm playing Hades at the moment, which is fucking incredible. Mm. I recommend all of y'all you're listening play Hades it's absolutely amazing and I'm a bit addicted to that at the moment I sort of can't stop playing it um and Kim's quite worried and the dog's quite the dog's starving what um, time do you start in the morning <laughs> <laughs> uh, as soon as I get up so you know 1 p.m uh, <laughs> play a bit of fucking Hades uh go to bed <laughs> some Coltrane maybe with dinner go to bed do it all again the next day <laughs> productive lockdown uh, I'm listening to an awful lot of music though I am listening to a lot I'm not practicing as much at the moment as, a, as I would want to but um, I'm listening to a load of music tell us like a lot a lot of rock and metal a lot of jazz yeah I'm listening to an awful lot of music and I'm reading a lot too reading a bit what have you I've read a dog in lockdown as well so my life has intrinsically changed what, what have you read what, what's, what's the highlight of your listening and what's the highlight of your reading? Highlight of my dog at all? Is that, are you interested in that? Um, 
I don't really, I don't really like dogs. You know, everyone's like, oh, get a dog, get a cat. I'm like, why? I don't, I don't understand it. I'm just going to alienate the entire audience now, but yeah. you can all slag me off or something. That's fine. You don't, I mean, I don't know. It's just a bit of unconditional love. I wanted to ask you about this, Riley, when you sent that message in the WhatsApp group earlier on about your dog, because I was, I was thinking, well, surely you would have mentioned that before lockdown, if that had been something that was in your life. What kind of dog have you got? Because I've been trying to convince Leanne for... You know, oh, you don't know, because Chris isn't on Facebook anymore, that's why he doesn't know about this. Yeah, I mean, everyone else knows about it, Chris. I said all that stuff and asked about the specific stuff that was on the dog, and now I'm just talking about the dog. She's called Ripley out of um, after Alien, the movie, and she's a little beagador. She's like half beagle, half Labrador. So she's like a little stubby, she's like a little golden Labrador with stubby legs. That's awesome. She's really cute. But she's a street dog, so she's... Go, Riley, bring her, bring her on the stream. This will be the first dog on the stream, man. Come on, go and get yeah, the... She's now on the street selling drugs. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, currently, she's sort of cowering <laughs> under... Under it's a black gym, so I don't think she's up for it. But she's doing really well with the with the fire. Uh, highlight of my listening. Do you want jazz or do you want like non? -jazz? Whatever, man. Um, I'm I'm completely obsessed with Black Sour. Like wow, old school. Like I can't. I honestly, I'm, I'm just I've completely fallen in love with it in the past year or so. So I that a lot. Um. Yeah, I've never, really, well, I've never really listened to any like heavy metal, but the the lead singer of Led uh, of Iron Maiden, um, Bruce Dickinson. He lived down the road from you, didn't he? Lived, yeah, literally like behind my house. Yeah. Um, yeah. And over over lockdown, his uh, now ex, well, they they had separated like last year, but um, his ex wife uh, died like completely out of the blue and not not COVID related, she mm. dropped down dead. But then we had like um, paparazzi on the street for the lead singer of wow. Iron Maiden, ex-wife dying. <laughs> but like proper, like what's his name, Jonathan Pye? Like it really, really? looked like that. They were like, they were in tracksuit bottoms and then like shirt and tie and jacket because <laughs> they were oh, only no on camera. Way. That way. And they were so, weird. So, so I was like, walking over to my my parents live directly over the road from them so i was like walking over carrying my daughter to just drop her off to play with my parents for a bit and these guys were on the street like oh did you did you know her uh can you can you give us any stories about her <laughs> like so thirsty wow. um, but anyway as a result of that i was like oh he must be he must they must be like probably Good, and I know they're really famous because um, there are, there are people standing out on the street trying to hustle me for stories about his ex-wife. So um, I didn't oh, check. Did you? What did Intrigued. you check out? Whatever, what whatever was like the the highest rated shit on Spotify or whatever. Run to the hills. Don't be a normie. Do, listen to um, listen to just listen to the number of the beast. The album it's it's really great actually yeah i did listen to quite a lot of that that's good yeah it's it's genuinely i was listening to that the other day actually so bands like that i think i mainly heard bands that were really influenced by them yeah um and same with kind of like led zepp and and yeah. and, and sabbath to be honest so i sort of checked out people it's like so eddie van halen passed away recently yeah but yeah. i mainly yeah. was checking out guitarists who kind of were influenced by him well that's um, probably every guitar every rock guitar yeah 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 but but particularly those who were around maybe at the same time or kind of just after who really started from where he sort of you know he raised the bar and then they kind of went from there you never um, you were never like a van he van halen kid at all no no i i, I checked i checked a bit of it out but yeah i i the, there's quite a lot of it i guess yeah. um it, it didn't kind of grab me as much as some of the other stuff because it just sounded like an old fashioned version of what I was checking out already, I guess. Well, everything's kind of old fashioned apart from the guitar playing, which is, which is not yeah. old fashioned, but hmm. like, I still, I think Van Halen's cool though. I like, yeah, I like that. I, I went on a binge as well when he died. I went on a bit of a Van Halen mm. binge. Um, can you come and have a baby cameo? 
Yeah, come on, Tim. You, Tim's got to show us his little one. So the album is called Little One. You can get it in the normal spots. Best place to get it, Tim's website. Oh, also, happy birthday, Mom. It's my mum's 70th today, so happy birthday, Nettie. Oh, Tim, you've made such a cute kid, man. <laughs> no, how did that happen? Oh, look, she's got hair now. Oh, she's Lisa, so cute. you're live on the internet. Can you say hello? Lisa. <laughs> Can you say happy birthday? Happy? Happy. Birthday. Birthday. Oh, that's super <laughs> cute. <laughs> well performed. <laughs> that's Daddy and Elisa. That's oh. Riley. That's Ant. And that's Chris. You've met Chris. Do you remember Chris? Huh? Yeah? <laughs> Liar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Come on. She's not two yet. Two in January. Wow. Has she had her first bass lesson? Does everyone say that? She's made her first pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's your new vocation, Tim. Priorities. <laughs> yeah, she has played the bass. She likes, she likes playing the piano. Oh. She likes playing the piano, don't you? Yeah. She looks like you, man. Like, even since like two weeks ago, she's, I mean, maybe it's just the angle of the camera, but she definitely yeah. has this bit of you. Definitely. No, we're, we're live on the internet. We can't watch the grappler now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't understand. I mean, we can. Well. We can broadcast yeah, the, gr the grappler. We we yeah, actually, the music's great. You put the grappler on. <laughs> That's what I choose for my final video. Yeah, stack up. <laughs> um, well, so, yes, yeah, since Tim is competing for bandwidth, uh, in the in the Thornton household, I suppose we could sort of move towards the final video. If no one has anything else to add, I need a book. <laughs> yeah, Aww. something about a book. What is um, the last video, Anne? Say it one more time. What is the last video? Oh, it's passengers. <laughs> ah. ah. Thoughts on that, Chris? You just sort of uh, leapt to attention there. Do you like this song? Uh, yeah, it's good. Well, I mean, it take, it takes me. I spent a long time mixing all of these. I don't I don't really do much mixing, so it it took mm. me like three times the amount of time to yeah. do half as good a job as someone who would do it on a daily basis. Um, and yeah, this was this is one of my favorite. Wow. All right. Please. We're going to play the video. Chris, I think it sounds great, man. Oh. Yeah, and, to be uh, honest, the, the whole thing from my point of view was like a bit of a test to see what this room could do. Because it's a it's a small space and we never built it for, you know, what we did in it, to be honest. I, we built it as a space just to put my drums, not even have any microphones, just literally a space to put my drums and play. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, gradually over time, things have been you know developing and when when Tim mentioned the album and it, it sort of the opportunity arose I thought it would be a great opportunity to actually see what the room could do um so yeah I mean to be honest I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with how it turned out from a mixed point of view um yeah, I think you it did sounds, a great I job did a fucking great job yeah I think you did yeah <laughs> especially because you had to fucking play on it as well <laughs> as engineer it. Oh yeah, sorry. And video it as well is pretty nuts. That I mean that that was that was mad actually to be fair. Like trying to make sure that the that the sound was good and it was recording and it hadn't missed any any channels and then to get all the cameras working, make sure they're in focus and no one's moved and then sit down behind the drums and play. I remember and there was one moment I can't remember what tune it was but because I was going to <laughs> <laughs> what the 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 roasting? Yeah, totally. I was going to bring that up. And and by the look of by the look on your oh, face, yeah, that was, that was really funny. Yeah, yeah. It was the way you put it as well, because you were like, "Oh man, like if that's an artistic decision, like the slowing down thing, like that's cool." But like <laughs> <laughs> the the right. context to this for for anyone that's watching that, that that doesn't know what's going on, I Tim was counting and counting in this tune, and I was trying to make sure the cameras were. Rolling. 
the 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 audio was going and I was I had the right chart on the on the stand and I was obviously you know playing a little bit under I don't think it was that bad I think it might have even been like five to seven bpm it wasn't even like anything particularly bad and then after after the second false start and what did you say Ant? They, like it was, it was super cutting and I was just like I, I was I remember I was turning around I was just looking at the cameras to be honest just trying to make sure they were going yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it was out there it was it, it was left the field I would say oh man Chris but man, you, you you were doing such an unbelievable job man I was probably edgy and tr and rushing to be honest but um I learned a lesson not I learned a lesson that day not to mess with I don't know if you'll be able to hear it but I'll try and play it because I have oh yeah it. great great Start coming in, which is cool, but if I keep it at the same time, then I'm sure everything is safe. Uh, yeah, it's fine, but I don't know where the play with what you counted in wrong, Tim. Obviously, I kind of did. Uh, so good. Oh, how love, you, I love the witch's cool thing. <laughs> so, so I'm, so I'm like, cool so, so I'm like, hey, look, so um, in case anyone couldn't really hear that, I remember it now. So Tim kind of counts it in, and Chris like it settles on. I mean, the tempo, which is probably exactly the same, but I'm like, I don't know whether to, to, you know, come in with you, like which beat should I play it with you or with you, you know, like, just, just tell me which one. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm saying. To be honest, and I know you're a nap pill guy, but I prefer this studio when it's just me in it, put it like that. <laughs> Chris, um, I'm looking forward to, uh, so for anyone watching, I, I actually live, my, my parents live really near to Chris Draper. So Chris, maybe around Christmas, if we're out of lockdown, we can, um, drink like a vat of mulled wine and record like a free free jazz christmas uh, improvisation album i'm, I'm live in. stream yeah oh i love live stream up in the stakes all right i would love, I would love that so much <laughs> i'll tune I'll in be, i'll be your first kickstarter subscriber to that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm game man that sounds fun <laughs> all right great well, chaps, if anyone's got no, if no one's got any more shout outs to do or anything, we'll, we'll play the video and then that will be it. There will be no more talking. Oh, what? Um, oh my God. Are we not what? even like to comment on passengers? There's so much well, we, can, we can do that if you want. Will, I don't will I see you again? Or is this it? <laughs> I mean, okay, we'll have a chat after the video then. Deep now, man. We'll, so, we'll sign off. We'll sign yeah, off. Don't want to meander to, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Fine. Fine. Okay. Here we go. This is passengers. Enjoy.
Vibes. That, that one, I think, is a good example of how much guitar in, in this band changed it. I think it feels yeah, completely, really yeah. Mm. That and um, uh, the, the, the Charlie Hayden one. What's that called again? Country. Beyond the Country. Beyond the Country, that as well. Like They feel a lot more kind of like blues country than they do with, with piano, I think. Yeah. And I think a lot of places. In fact, uh, uh, homage the one that we played before, which was Riley's feature, is actually kind of the only like proper swing track on the album, and that in fact it never actually goes to like walking swing, um, which is weird given that my main influence is Ray Brown and Oscar I'll, Peterson stuff. I was gonna say. Uh, sometimes what I talk about on the stream is like how I met people and I can't remember exactly where I met you Tim but pretty much every time I would go to Ronnie's you would be there in the house band <laughs> and I'd be trying to yeah. like sit, sit in sometimes on the jams and stuff because this was a while back um, I moved to London around around 10 years ago I think so I don't know if you were there you kind of moved from Birmingham right yeah in uh, 2010 so yeah. yeah, I met you through Gabriel uh, Latch. Oh yeah, yeah. You were, you were buddies with him. Um, yeah, Gabriel's actually quite a good matchmaker because he hooked me and you up, um, and now look at us. And he also introduced me to my wife. So. Wow! Hey. Hey. Wow. Shout out to Gabriel Latch. I thought Tim, you just were probably. Or some sort of like Italian Tinder or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's there, actually there's no hidden meaning or insult in that. I just mean because you're literally basically Italian anyway. I assumed that there would be like a sec a section, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Uh, so this, in in summary of. Uh, what we've been talking about this album has been such a pleasure for me because this is the third album i've released i actually realized when chris was talking about the process of having to record it and uh play that every single album i've released has been um on a budget and recorded in one of the band members studios by one of the band members who played on it yeah, so yeah so yeah, riley and chris has been on all of them Great. So the first, well, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say. Was, the first one was Dave O'Higgins um, yeah. engineering. Oh, and oh, second, oh. second one was um, Grant Windsor, who's moved moved back to Australia, engineering in his uh, studio in Chiswick. And then this one. Um, but of the of the three albums I've released, the first two, uh, upon releasing them, I was not really happy with them. But I was like, I've come this far. I'll go through with it, and uh, I've become less and less happy with them as time goes on. Um, you know, that's, that's fine, and it's, a, it's. I think it's. I think it's a good thing to do to document what headspace you're in at that time in your career, and just you know, go for it and release it. Otherwise, you'll end up never releasing anything. I thought you were going to say the opposite, Tim, because I sometimes feel like that immediately when a record comes out. Um, I'm like, oh no, but then with a bit of distance, I'm like. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it sounds good. But Riley, did you hear that, man? If we want to play on Tim's next record, we, we one of us has to get a studio or you don't. Right. Not no, we now. still have one. It's fine. It doesn't need to change every time. It just needs to be one thing. <laughs> <to be doing. laughs> um, Chris doesn't get fired. Yeah, but this is fine. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, Riley. You can you can rent mine from me. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Even if you get fired, oh, that'd be so awkward. It's, it's that classic drummer thing, Matt. What is it about drummers? They either, like, have a van, like Ringo, or they start a gig and and they always play drums and they book other musicians. Yeah. Or they, ha they have a studio. It's like drummers. They just sort of, that's how they do things, isn't it? I, I, yeah, yeah that, that's very true. That's very true. I'm only guilty of the last one, so... Yeah. Actually, I, I did have a gig once. It was it was the only gig that I've ever run, um, and it was when when I first moved back to London. I when I had absolutely zero money, and I was really There's no bar in Richmond. Oh no, I ran that one as well. That's true. Yeah, you're a liar. I'm talking about that one. The first. So okay, so that's the second one. The very first one. 
um, I was really missing having a Sunday roast on for for a Sunday lunch. So I basically rang around. Oh. Every, every pub. What uh, about this game? Yeah, every pub inside the M25 just calling up, basically saying, um, "If we come and play for a few hours, um, will you give us a Sunday roast? If you give us cash, then that's kind of that's kind of good too. But will you give us a Sunday roast?" I eventually found this one pub that would do it. It wasn't inside the M25, though. It was just outside in a place called Ivor. Um, and we did that for... I can't remember how long we did that for. And I used, to, I, used to wank, I used to get Tim to come and do it. At least three weeks. So if there's any sort of aspiring drummers there wondering about how to sort of have a successful career in music and balance earning a living with, you know, creative fulfilment and stuff like that, just sort of... Full stomach. <laughs> 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 Riley, do you want to introduce us, man? Can, can she do some tricks or something? Could uh, I mean, she's on the couch now, but she could probably give me a riffy high five. No, no, wait, hold up. No, hop. High five. No, hop. High five. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> riffy. Riffy. <laughs> no, hop. Is it pretty? <laughs> she, can't, she can't really do tricks on the couch. She sort of panics. Um, Guys, just to sort of avoid the content becoming too niche. Yeah, sorry about this. Um, no, it's cool. It's, 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 yeah. Is a niche? Is a dog niche? Is a dog less niche than jazz? I think there's only eight people watching us, isn't there? Six now. So I wouldn't worry. <laughs> Four, two, people, none. Two. <laughs> it's just us having a chat, really. It is indeed. <laughs> Go on then, go on, chat. I want to know what you were going to move us on to. Yeah, what were you doing? Coronavirus think... or Trump? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think I was probably just going to sign off to be honest. But since you've oh, okay. all got so many more interesting things to talk about, please oh, continue. What have you got, Tim? Oh, he's off, he's gone. Has he bailed? <laughs> No, I don't have anything else to say. Well, this has been very nice. It's nice to see all your heads and your shiny heads and your shiny faces. Likewise. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I don't know about you guys, but like having not really spoken to anyone but like one person at a time since March, it's quite overwhelming to see like four people all at once and like remember how to converse with people. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, especially on Zoom. It's, it's been a pleasure anyway, all the same. Well, I think... Yeah. Your head is the shiniest of heads, Chris. So it was <laughs> I mean, it is being lit up in a certain way. I think I can see on the. Little... I've never seen a shinier head of it. He's positioned his his light to achieve that very <laughs> effect. Maximum sheen. Actually, now you mention it, it's kind of like a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh. Yeah. Are there any um? Are there any silly? Uh, trying to think of other silly things that happened in the album recordings that we can tell people about. I remember Chris, you had you had oh, a bell. Shall I find the clip of Chris's oh, little bell? You know what? So there's a there's a few things in the album. I think pretty much in every track there's like a a, a secret um, kind of piss taking moment where halfway through mixing I decided that it was all a little bit too serious on that particular song and inserted something in that in that area and just put it loud enough in the mix so you could hear it, but not so loud that it stands out. Yes, let's have it, Tim. Everyone be quiet so we can listen to Chris's little bell. Um, can, you, can you do something, please? Do we have to go back? Did you hear it? Oh. Yeah, we heard it. I love it. You can hear Chris going. Quite annoyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can so, you, can you make them take thing. me seriously? I was going. <laughs> yeah, thing, right? I was going for a thing, and none of you would take me seriously. It was actually going to work, but I don't. It was know. a great thing. Was it was a great thing, guys. I'm not sure that it comes across too obviously to the people. So basically, we were going to begin this tune with the first note of the bass line. And Chris was going to hit this really nice 
bell. So Chris hit the bell and then Tim just started cracking up and just couldn't stop laughing. And then Tim and Chris got all angry and he was like, and he looked around and Riley was cracking up as well. He's like, and make them take me seriously. That was brilliant. It's very funny. Yeah, I don't know where that is actually. I think I must've got rid of it after that. You've abandoned it. Yeah. It is don't pretend that you don't have that lined up to bring out for the finale of this. <laughs> yeah, come on, Chris. Come on. Give the people what they want, Chris. Come on. I mean, if, if what they want is to... Bell, 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 bell. Have you not got it? Seriously? No, I, I think I think it might be somewhere. I don't know where. But it, 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 oh. it does actually make a, it makes a cameo appearance later on in that tune. Is it that tune or another one, Tim, where we just put it in for, for, for a laugh? No, it's on um, Big Feet. Like you, three quarters you, uh, of the way through. There was a there was a bit where there was like you did you did a drum solo on a tune called Big Feet, and there was a really big fill that you did, and it and you like on on the tape you would like missed the symbol or something to to resolve the fill. On the one, yeah. So, so I so I said to you, can you like. Can, can you re-record that symbol? So you put you put in a big crash to to resolve the fill, um, and then you sent it to me later with also the addition of the little bell as well as the crash. And I was like, great, leave it in. So, and it's, <laughs> of course, man, always in so heart. Then, yeah. So in in the tune Big Feet, there's um, there's also a cameo from the bell, which was superimposed. <laughs> <laughs> Chris's yeah, little you, bell. You've got to be listening pretty closely to tell that that was an overdub. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Bye then. Nice one, chaps. Good to see you guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Tom, John, Katie, our uh, people who've tuned in a little bit later on. It's been real. Love your work, chaps. I do hope that we get to um, to play some of these tunes. Maybe we could do a couple of weeks in the new year or something if things open up, if, if all the clubs yeah. have survived. And... I thought we were going to get to um, uh, Peggy Skylight in Nottingham because the guy um, sent me an email uh, last week saying, uh, unbelievably, we are in a position to actually still go ahead with this gig if you want to. Mm. Um, so I was about to send a text round to you guys saying, like, should we just go and do it? Obviously, there's not going to be any funding to, you know, but whatever, should we go and do it? And then, yep. and then literally 20 minutes later, they were like, oh, we're going to do another lockdown now, by the way. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I just arranged yeah. to have some pasta at the, at the local farm <laughs> with some yeah. people as well. And then, you know, when you do all the, when you do all the dates with people and it's so complicated finding like one day that everyone could do, we just got that and then they announced the lockdown. Bad times. You arranged to have some pasta at the local farm? Yeah, you know, there's like a pasta farm. <laughs> is that a thing? Is no. it a pasta farm? <laughs> is there such thing as a pasta farm? I'm not farm? letting you leave this on that and yes. walk away with we arranged that pasta at the local farm. Yes. <laughs> they've got a little um they've got a little kitchen and um I, you know I guess uh, they have uh, various products from the farm that they do sell there but you know since pasta isn't technically farmed it, it, it is not from it's there. Gone. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Whatever you Thank do, you. just be safe. Uh, just use, be careful. All right, guys, it's been real. Bye. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming and hanging out on the quarantine zone. Love. Bye-bye. Love you all.